The reviews for The Last of Us 2 are in. Should you buy it? Hello, everyone. I am Mecha Random 42, the one, the only, the original, your favorite YouTube harpy. And before you click off this video, I did bring in somebody who has played The Last of Us Part 1. So here we go. Boom. Who are you? Why are you here? <laughs> I'm Rob Robot Shlomo because I own a, a PS3 and I own a copy of The Last of Us for PS3. I have um, it on PS4, I play, but I played it. I didn't finish it but i played it and um i don't see what the big the big deal is <laughs> honestly yeah they're really run-of-the-mill shoot infected no, zombie-like hordes of people it's, it's just a shooter they're just shooters it's 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 a decent enough game but i lost interest around uh, two-thirds a third of the way through i mean okay but apparently there's a big stink because um, of a certain character and uh, it's been making the rounds of the internet. And... Well, the big, the biggest stink has been Naughty Dog going around and flagging any channel who is talking about it and mm -hmm. DMCAing people and all that good shit. So if that didn't put you off this game, maybe maybe some of these reviews will. Of course, oh, yeah. I do. I do have to pull up the super positive. Everybody's got the ten out of ten reviews. You know, what? let me open the original here. Every everyone gave it a ten out of ten. The, gar or five the Guardian, out of five, five, ten out of ten. five. Game Radar, five of five. Telegraph, five of five. Gaming Trend, ten of ten. Hardcore Gamer, ten, ten of ten. We got this covered. Ooh, there's a trusted source. <laughs> ten of ten. Is it real? Is this real? I or is this know. fake? I have no idea. <laughs> Uh, I've, I really have no idea. <laughs> I don't even know the, anymore. I don't the care. Sixth Access, that's a real site. Impulse Gamer, uh, 10 of 10, 10 of 10, 10 of 10. Push Square, but there are a couple outliers <laughs> that that say um, uh, that we're too thrilled with this. Now, I do want to uh, respond to this one article specifically. We're, we're definitely talking right now about the Polygon article that I don't think they realize how how their review is coming off, at least to somebody like me who's kind of comparing it to, you know, the entirety of the gaming culture and maybe the, even the people who play it. Well, we'll get into it. I'll probably interrupt as you read the article here. Uh, well, anyway, the last of, from Polygon, the last <laughs> of us two, last of us part two review. We're better than this. No, did we're you not. Know murder, <laughs> no, did we're you not. know murder is wrong? Take a look around. Really? We're better than this. <laughs> no, we're not. And there will be some mild spoilers for the game if you don't want to No, But you know what? If you're just watching me rip on it, you probably don't care that much. Probably don't. Did you know murder is wrong? Really? <laughs> and this is by someone named Maddie Myers. And Maddie, she worked at the, uh, I don't know, Maddie from A Hole in the Wall. She worked at the Mary Sue, Paste Magazine, the Boston Phoenix. Uh, when she's not busy explaining to people that Blanca is the best Street Fighter character, she writes synth pop music. Ooh, yeah, because... All the kids love that. Here, I'm going to send you the image I'm looking at. So this is the person who wrote the article here. She yeah. kind of looks like exactly the type of person who really, really needs to know that, you know, maybe bad things are bad. She she kind of she kind of has this, the typical and I'm going to judge a book by by the cover, especially considering that this is a games journalist. She kind of looks like she might be a little bit of an SJW to me. But hey, I have bright red hair because I'm a little bit more punk rock than that. <laughs> Uh, the Last of Us Part Two depicts the future, yet it fails to escape its own past. The sequel feels like a time capsule from 2013, the year the first game was released in real life and the year of the fictional in-game zombie outbreak. The Last of Us Part Two seems doomed to walk a well-worn circle, unable to break out of the ever-thickening carapace, 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 ah, whatever it is, uh, <laughs> forming along its skin, just like the victims of the cordyceps. Cordyceps fungus. Zombies. Uh, They're you, zombies. Yeah, whatever it is. <laughs> freaking that zombies. You, that tells you how how uh, how well I paid attention. Yeah, that that's me. I watched it for about nine hours. That is the game's central problem and what makes so much of it a challenge to get through. This is a story about characters who seem unable to learn or grow, and more specifically, unable to consider the humanity of the people they kill. 
But it has diversity and representation. But But it represents people. If you already think violence isn't the answer to many of the world's problems, the repeated lesson that killing is bad makes the game almost maddening. I don't have any problems, I meaning Maddie, empathizing with people who I'm asked to kill in video games. The Last of Us 2 must think I'll struggle with it. Though, since it doles out all sorts of reasons why I should feel Regret about the murder spree its characters have embarked upon. But the game's larger problem is that the characters themselves don't ever seem to catch up with me. What's worse is that the characterization of Ellie makes it seem like she should also understand this part of the journey. I kept expecting her to grow and turn away from a life of constant violence. But she never picks up on the obvious didactic nature of the game she's in. You're saying she's not self-aware of the game? (sighs) Even as the designers beat you over the head with a very simple lesson about the value of human life. Part two is a game not about rising above revenge or violent urges in general. It's filled with characters dedicated to never seeing the bigger picture beyond themselves. Oh! It's It's not war and peace. Well, not only that, I think that's pretty, like, it's, it's pretty representative of a lot of the people that they were really, really pandering to for this game. Because, as you know, this was marketed as, oh, this is going to be this woke game that we've got Anita Sarkeesian coming in and, mm-hmm. you know, why? making sure, yeah, <laughs> making sure it's represented. Why do you have Anita Sarkeesian coming in and work and, and contributing to this game? She's not a game designer. Well, this is just, they're just, that is the people that they are pandering to in this game demographic of the people who can't see anything beyond their own hatred rage, the people who can't see the bigger picture about anything and can't see anything other than themselves. And that's the only reason I wanted to get in and do this video because I think it really, really parallels a lot of the mentality of society nowadays that really, really is, for me anyway, problematic. And the people who um, want to control and censor everything and the people right, who well, just don't have a lot of maturity without getting too although, specific. Yeah, Although the game's backdrop is a global, to- uh, global toilet paper shortage, uh, <laughs> and although it reaches towards the idea of larger injustices depicting two warring human factions, the cult of Seraph- Seraphitus and the militaristic Washington Liberation Front, It is really just a story about a teenage girl, her damage, and her apparent belief that the only way to get over that trauma is murder. A lot of murder. Yada, 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 nobody cares. Uh, The gorgeous places you'll murder. And, yeah, they made Ellie look like um, Ellen Page. They really did. Well, wasn't this the game that Ellen Page actually sued for her likeness because she ended up being in the David Cage, what what was it, Beyond Two Souls game? She's like, I'm already in a game. I, you know, you're just stealing my image. So so they didn't really have a lot of originality coming into this in the first place. And it was pretty much very similar to the storyline of the Walking Dead game, which I did play, the Telltale one, where you're playing as the, the sort of this adopted father of a girl, Clementine, Clementine, whatever they're calling her and that's pretty Mm. much the exact same story arc here wow maddie goes on uh, at length over here holy crap wow (laughs) let me let's wrap up i see a widespread level selfish selfishness and intense care for the preservation of human life in the real 2020 in fact an increasingly loud demand for society that meets that need our society's uh our systems have failed in large part but individual people remain strong and kind Things have rarely been worse, but there is hope to be found in the actions of average folks fighting to do the right thing. We don't need a video game to rub our noses in hatred and violence to know that other people who are just trying to survive aren't the real enemy. The Last of Us 2 depicts individual people who are instead ruthless, capable, yet self-absorbed, and whose perception of violence is limited to how it affects them and their chosen family members. Uh, you haven't been long on the. You haven't been on this planet very long, have you, Maddie? She doesn't look very old. No, she looks pretty young. <laughs> they are almost unbelievably unable to see the bigger picture. Part two ends up feeling needlessly bleak at a time when a nihilistic worldview has perhaps never been less attractive. Oh, hardly- oh! D- didn't I say something very similar in Star Trek Discovery and Picard and every one of these places that were supposed to have some sort of hope? You know. Having having a dark zombie shooter or infected person shooter doesn't seem like a terrible sort of I'm, setting for this. And I agree. Right now, probably I wouldn't want to play it. But 
I'm curious if Maddie Myers, hold on. I believe, what did she, did she work for Kotaku? No. She worked for the Mary Sue. Yeah, the Mary Sue Kotaku. Yeah, deputy editor of Kotaku. Before that, oh, she was the Mary actually, Sue. Oh, and she, actually, she, ha she has contributed to the Mary Sue uh, in terms of Star Trek Discovery. Oh, what did she say about Star Trek Discovery? Yeah, it's just reporting on the Star Trek panel. But she has written about Star Trek Discovery. I mean, she ever done any work, work like glorifying the violence in Star Trek or or apologizing for it in this new modern Star Trek? Because yeah. as you know, one of the things I really really oppose is how dark and gory and over the top it goes, having an, a blatant disregard for human life, and that's really not what Star Trek is to me. So <laughs> if she's complaining about this in the video game, where I think it's kind of appropriate to have it, but then not in Star Trek. Oh, she has a couple tweets. She has a tweet about. Uh, oh no! Hold on. I'm just wondering. I'm just wondering if this article wasn't written though, just specifically to be the one standout that's going to get the clicks that that people actually look at. Because when everybody's doing, you know, ten out of ten, it's it's like when you have a YouTuber go in and give one movie a bad review that everybody else is giving, and you always kind of have to wonder, oh, you didn't like that movie, but everybody else liked it. Are you just doing this for clicks? That's what well, I kind of I'm questioning here. Rewatching, she has a tweet, rewatching Star Trek TNG, and I love the moments uh, when this show tries and fails to convince us, but Card hates all kids. As opposed, as opposed to just to Wesley, he doesn't hate kids. He's uncomfortable around them. There's a difference. <sighs> you missed the point. You missed the point, Maddie. <laughs> of course, she did. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you missed the point. Uh, anyway, so let me let's let me wrap this the, this part up. Lost we always go into Star Trek. I don't know if I'm going to cut that out or leave it in. <laughs> just a little tangent about it. His characters are surviving, but they're not learning, and they're certainly not making anything better. Maybe the most surprising thing that The Last of Us Part Two offered me was the surety that, while the game was made with great skill and craft, we're actually much better, much, much better than Naughty Dog thinks we are. So, I, I'm kind of surprised, Maddie. This game was tailored for to you. Mm -hmm. You are the audience for this game. Specifically. I mean... She's you're you're absolutely 1,000%. I'm putting her picture up here because, you know, she's, she's going to link it on her, her article. She's an alphabet person, and she uh, is taking issue with this game. And like I said, this was supposed this was supposed to be your game. And what happened? It has diversity. It has all kinds oh, of representation. Oh, is she an alphabet person? Yeah, she's an alphabet oh, person. Oh, okay. I didn't want to assume. Has, I just assumed she was an SJW. Well, player. she has the flag on her, oh, okay. on her Twitter profile. So, But she's she's uh, it has diversity. It has... All kinds of representation. It has all the themes you're looking for, but it's not. Thank you, Mr. Motorcycle. And it has all. It's not enough for you. See, and I had issue with the game being just one of these panders of, you're going to pander with, you know, hey, we have representation, representation over actual gameplay, and like I said, I'm not huge on using the controller for shooters anyway. So this is one of those games I would probably only pick up if it were 15 bucks anyway. I'm not gonna pick it up. I wasn't yeah. gonna buy. I wasn't gonna. I wasn't gonna get it before. I'm not gonna get it now. <laughs> Nothing's changed. Nothing's no. changed. No, no and it's sale. still. Ka -ching. And it still doesn't help the fact that they've been going around striking YouTubers, and even as recently as what a few days ago with yeah. Twitter just retweeting the pictures of it. I mean, if if that alone isn't enough to really sour you to the taste of this. You know, there's plenty of games out there, and I get it. We're kind of in a, well, there's not, not a whole lot to do. We really, really need some escapism. And this really brings me back to my point that I make a lot about Star Trek. In a day and age like we're living in right now, I would love something really, really happy, uplifting, fun, positive. I'm looking forward to the new Paper Mario game that's coming out quite a bit because mm -hmm. that's way more in my wheelhouse anyway. But... You know, if, if we had some positive outlets like Star Trek, then a zombie shooter every now and then isn't going to be... And I know they're infected. I keep saying zombies. Can't, can't tell Mecca. She keeps saying zombies. But it's not Undead going to be such a big deal. Matter, yeah. Huh? Undead lives matter. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, I mean, The Walking Dead really was a thing that was supposed to be the humans not the actual corpses walking around so just just put that in your pipe and smoke it and tell us what you guys think in the comment section below any final words mm, no not really <laughs>
<laughs> I am at a loss for words. Uh, no, it's not. I'm at a loss for words. I just I don't I don't care enough to to buy the have game. any words. Yeah. You didn't lose the sale because I never was going to buy it anyway. <laughs> I would have given it some sort of a review had they given me a copy. But, hey, they don't like Alphabet people unless you work for Kotaku. So mm -hmm. tell me what you guys think in the comment section below. I am MechaRandom42 and you are? Um, I am apathetic. <laughs> we'll see you guys later. Bye. Bye. Thanks for watching. If you liked it, make sure to hit that like button. And if you want to see more, don't forget to subscribe. See you in the next video. Bye.